Okay, well that's a, a common type of uh, question here. So this was a case where we were given the force and the pressure and we had to find the area. Well, the difficult thing was we weren't quite given the force. We weren't quite given the force. We had to work it out here. The question was asking what was the area of the tire in contact with the ground? It's not so easy. So you have to ask, say to yourself, well, gee, well, what's the pressure in the tire doing? The pressure in the tire is basically supporting the unicycle. So you have to ask what force does it have to provide to support the unicycle? Well, it has to provide a force that's going to balance the weight over here. So the hard part was getting the force to plug in. Well, if you're given 50 kilograms, how do you turn that into a force? The way to turn 50 kilograms into a force is m times g to find the weight. So that was the hard part, I think, here, finding this 490 number. All right. Do, do you happen to have a, a printout of the, the homework with you? No. No? Well, why don't we try this problem from the homework? I think this is a pretty typical type of problem. To get a, a bigger pressure? Well, remember that the pressure is already telling you, it's kind of already an average. It's already telling you the newtons per square meter. So, well, well let's put it an, uh, another way. Um, this hand is at a pressure of one atmosphere, and this hand is at a pressure of one atmosphere, but that does not mean together that they're at a pressure of two atmospheres. They're just both at a pressure of one atmosphere, so it doesn't make sense to add those two pressures. Pressures are not kinds of uh, things that it makes sense to add at this point. Well, we have the car. What equation do you think you're going to use here? A equals force over pressure. Okay, and so your first question was, should I put in 4P? for this instead of just P. And the answer is, well, no, each of these tires is just at that one single pressure. And it doesn't actually make sense to, to add those pressures together. Um, they're, they're each just at, at, that single, at that single pressure. Pressure is not the kind of thing that, uh, that adds. Okay. So, I guess I can get the force mm -hmm. by um, multiplying uh, mass times gravity. Right. That's good. And for the pressure, um, standard units is pascals, right? So I need right. to change it. So it's 2.30 times 10 to the fifth pascal. That's good. That's right. What did you get for this answer so far? Uh, 0.083. Good. And they wanted the answer in centimeters? Mm -hmm. I didn't notice that. Okay, that's good that you noticed that. How were you thinking about converting this into square centimeters? Multiplying it by 100. Let's think a little bit more about that. Now, what's the conversion between me? 
what's the conversion between meters and centimeters? One meter is 100 centimeters. But we need to go between meters squared and centimeters squared. Well, the way to do that is to take this conversion and square both sides. If you square both sides, you would get one meter squared is 10,000 centimeters squared. One meter is only 100 centimeters, but one meter squared is 10,000 centimeters squared. Notice what we did is we just wrote down the conversion between meters and centimeters, but since we weren't interested in the squared units, we had to square both sides. Okay, so let's take our time with that conversion then. That's right, I didn't take enough time, but you're right, it's 830. square centimeters. So let's think about the reasoning that we went through here. We know that the weight of the car is a force of about 19,000 newtons. That means that the ground must be exerting a normal force of about 19,000 newtons. And then by Newton's third law, that means that the force of the tires on the ground must be 1,900, uh, around, uh, around 19,000 newtons. This is the force of the tires on the ground, and that's the force that we want to plug into here, because the pressure is the pressure in the tires, so we want to know the force that's being exerted by the tires. So the tires are exerting the same force over here. Now the question was asking us for the total area, right? Therefore, we wanted to know the total force that the tires were exerting. Well, the, fire, the tires were exerting a total force of around 19,000. So to figure out the total area, we had to plug this in. Notice that all this time, we never used the fact that there was four tires. That didn't really make much difference. It was just like the unicycle. The only time that the four tires would come into play is if the total area is 830 square centimeters, how would you find the area that's in contact for a single tire? What calculation would we have to do to find the area that, of contact for a single tire? Yeah, that's the only time where the number of tires would come in. So in this case, the number of tires was kind of red herring because they never really asked us about that. They just uh, focused, they gave us the information about the total mass, which allowed us to find the total force, and they asked us about the total area. So we never actually had to use the fact that there was four tires, and that would only come in if we had to split this area up between the tires. All right, I think that's a pretty typical type of question, and the key thing here was figuring out what number to plug in for F.